Hi there, and welcome back to our house. I wanted to make this quick video to add on to the do's and don'ts series. I've done videos on do's and don'ts when it comes to reading, uh, math, language arts of the Robinson curriculum, but I wanted to attack this one on to the end here. Do's and don'ts of the RC study environment, because I do think that some of these things are really important to go over. So, and they didn't really fit in any of the other categories. I might have gone some of these gone already over them, but they're worth repeating. So just a really quick little presentation here um, to make sure I cover all of these things. Okay, so don't function as a teacher for a class for your family and sometimes also others. Sometimes you're even homeschooling other people's children. So don't use this commercially available formal curriculum and then you're teaching it do instead do a self-teaching curriculum like the Robinson curriculum, because that's really what adult life is. It's not a series of spoon fed lessons administered by all knowing teachers or pre-programmed workbooks where you just uh, fill in the blank or check off a box. Right. And typically in those environments, groups descend to the lowest common denominator anyway, which is another form, obviously, of peer pressure. So. Don't do the teaching. Don't do these group settings where everybody's on pace together. Do pick a self-teaching curriculum where everybody is going at their own speed and teaching themselves. Obviously, we recommend the Robinson curriculum. Now, don't include in your home books, magazines, newspapers that are not appropriate to read for your family. Purge them. If older kids are looking for something a bit more than what you have, Dr. Robinson recommends the Wall Street Journal. He says that's probably more educational than the local papers. So especially with all the spin and the media today and everything, just try to clear all of that out of your home. But do give them the best hours each day to spend studying with minimal distractions and don't focus so much on a strict schedule. I mean, if you want to, obviously that's fine, but they should know that whenever they get started, they need to, depending on their age, obviously, you know, set aside a few hours to when they're older, five to six hours of self-taught work. So do keep that in mind. Moving on. I know this is not a very popular one, but don't allow a TV set. It's a, it is a passive medium. It teaches passive thinking rather than active mental habits. And obviously there could be inappropriate programming for kids. It's a waste of time. It disconnects the family. I don't have to tell you more, right? Like we've all heard these things. Do have a separate room if you can and each one of them have a large desk with a good chair, no decorations on the wall, no distractions, and that they can clear it off at the end of the day. This is the optimal study environment. Now, in going back to the TV thing, they did have a TV that they would break out with like the antenna ears to watch a documentary, something as a family. And I've talked about this many times in other um, places in my course, you and your husband, obviously your spouse, you have to be on board. If your husband wants a TV in the home, don't be a nag. Don't uh, make everybody's life difficult. Pray about it. Um, make your appeal, but pray about it and focus on the path of least resistance. Make the thing that you want them to do the easiest thing to do, whether that's putting board games and puzzles in the place of where the TV is at, et cetera. There are things that you can do. Moving on here, another one that's not so popular, but it is one of the rules with RC is don't give them sugar. Sugar for a child is like alcohol to adults. It creates a lot of this restless hyperactivity, difficult to concentrate, attention deficit. You know, a lot of the labels that we throw around today could be tied to nutrition and sleep. And they're often caused by sugar in the diet. Even honey, you need to be careful with. I know the RC kids from what I've read, they would just sweeten maybe their bread with raisins, just really natural things like that. Obviously focusing on vegetables, lots of vegetables, uh, fruits, protein, just things like that. And they actually only had two big meals a day, which the more I do this, the more I gravitate to all the things that they did. And this is one of them because it, lunch does kind of come right in the middle of the school day. So 
I don't know. I'm still kind of playing around with that, but I do like the idea of just two large meals a day. All right, moving on. Don't um, constantly, like being a helicopter parent, trying to motivate your kids and keeping an eye on them and nagging them. Look, if you just tell them that they can't get up until they finish all their schoolwork, they're going to have some internal motivation there because obviously they don't want to sit there all day. But do, if possible, sit in the same room with them, maybe having your own desk and you can do accounting, bookkeeping, especially if you're working from home. Just your presence in the room working, you're setting an example, number one, but also kids just tend to be on their best behavior, obviously, when you're there, you're around, uh, it just kind of keeps them quiet, right? And I've noticed this difference. They can sometimes, because we don't have a, a school room, they don't have individual desks, we have to make it work just at the kitchen table. And so they're all together. And sometimes they can get a little chatty with each other. But obviously, when I'm around when I'm in that room, they're quiet. So just the presence of an adult can sometimes keep them all quiet and on task. But as long as they're all doing their work, and they don't get up until their work is finished. I want to worry too much about it. And this whole thing about you being in, in the room, that's really only up until a certain age. I'd say like age 12. I've definitely noticed that past the age of 11, 12, after doing this for so long, they really do not need any external motivation, any example. They can really just buckle down and do the work for hours without any issues. So I have found that to be true myself. Okay. Last one, this one's a biggie. Don't tolerate, allow any sort of dishonesty in your homeschooling. In order to be successful with this, your homeschooling must run on the honor system. There is no value in educating a student who tells lies, cheats, is dishonest. There, there is no real effective communication. You must discipline to whatever your extreme measures are for this dishonesty. It just must be known that it's not tolerated at any age under any circumstance. Do focus on having just a good homeschool home life. And part of that is, yes, the philosophy of learning. You know, Dr. Libran and I have talked about this in our Homeschooling Made Easy podcast. And that's this, that's the Robinson curriculum, right? But you also need to focus on the family life. Now, Dr. Robinson didn't feel like he had any, um, any way to, like, he didn't have the right to teach you how to teach morality or religion to your children. They had a way of doing it, uh, but he leaves that, obviously, that up to the parents. They would read the Bible together each night, and it was a habit ingrained in them so deep that even when they went off to college, they would call each other on the phone and on speakerphone, continue reading the Bible out loud together. And, you know, it kept them, kept their faith through college, all of that. So family life, that's a really critical component. You can't just focus so much on the learning. You also need to focus on the family life as well as building skills, which RC does, these study habits do. So focusing on all three will really give you a nice, healthy balance um, and just have that really good home environment for the children. And lastly here, um, I want to read to you a quote from Dr. Robinson. First, he quoted Thomas Jefferson saying, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. And one second. So I'm going to read to you a little quote from the RC course of study as far as this. Individual human freedom has a price. It is a price required of those who have the ability to think. It is, I believe, a price that the Lord intends for us to pay because the Bible is quite clear about the importance of freedom before God of each individual person. If you want your child to give up his freedom for the security of group thought and group action, send him to a public school. Peer group primacy is very efficiently taught in such schools. If, however, you want to teach freedom, then teach him to not ever join any group, at least not to subordinate himself to any group, to teach himself and to think for himself. Teach him or her these things in a good self-taught homeschool. And so 
that is where we end this video. If you're interested in the Robinson curriculum, I have a free 13 part video course, my gift to you. Just go to robinsoncurriculumcourse.com and you'll have access to it right away. You can also join me in my schoolhouse membership. We have live Q and A's, coffee chats, book club for the parents, read aloud recommendations for the kids, private videos, additional training, and my new course, Sustainable Homeschooling 101. It is a 26 part video series where I cover mindset, the Robinson curriculum from A to Z, and troubleshooting frequent issues that come up when making the transition. So all of this for just $10 a month, you can cancel anytime. And again, that RC course is free. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll link the playlist down below with the, for the rest of these do's and don'ts videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.